right. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Hey, I got. Hello. Are you seeing me here? David, I was texting. I was answering your question and I looked up and it's like, oh, it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> so I'm just going to I'm going to answer your question right now. Let's see. Um, yeah, E7 flat 9 flat 13. <laughs> David asked me, how do you play an E? Oops. Got to type in here. E7 flat 9 flat 13. Right? Now, um, basically, that is all. That's the same. The, a flat 13 in like an E, the flat, the 13th is a C sharp. So it'd be something, maybe something like that's a thirteenth flat nine. If you if you flat the thirteenth, uh, you end up with a, basically an E seven flat nine um, sharp five. So, uh, but if by using the term thirteenth, they may mean uh oh no, is it buffering? I just checked it was like 8.4, my speed. It was like 8.4 megabytes. Um, C add nine would just be like C add nine you could do. It's the same as C2. Um, so C add nine would be X32030. So, um, so there's multiple ways, David, to play. And there's multiple ways to play a C add nine, but that's just like the most common way. Or you could play it. Three, uh, sorry, X32033 would be another. I'm sorry, Vapo. Okay, well, hopefully that's, hopefully it's gonna stop doing it. It was lost video, C chat. Yeah, weird. Let me check my stream. I got 28 people right now. Um, let me do another speed test real quick. I'm not uploading anything. Um, I, I actually uploaded a new video. I'll post it after we're done, okay, um, for beginners. Uh, some of the stuff we talked about the other day. So, okay, my download speed's over 100 megabytes, 110. So that's good. Let's see what the upload is, though. Oh, it's dropping, though, 80, 90, yeah. This makes for great TV, doesn't it? <laughs> really compelling here. <laughs> um, so this would be uh, this would be like technically E seven. This is for David, by the way. <laughs> David <laughs> David hijacked this, this live stream. Uh, e seven flat nine flat thirteen kind of implies that there's still a normal five in there. See, I would probably call that a sharp five, um, but if you want a five in there, one way you could play it in an open position would be, it's not that difficult, zero, two, zero, one, one, one. So it requires a bar. And there's our root E, there's our fifth, there's our seventh, there's our third, there's our flat 13th, and there's the flat nine. Okay, now normally when you mean that chord, you actually mean something more like um, E7, what did I say, a flat nine sharp five. Something like that. So there, there I have a root, a, a third, a seventh, a flat nine, and a sharp five. There's no fifth in here. I mean, there's the fifth is a sharp five. So the way I would finger that is X. Oops, I'm sorry. Let me send you this one. That's the open position one. It's a little, it's a little interesting. You got that B and the C in there. Kind of cool though. Um, and then um, the the one I played up here. Actually, you could hit the low E if you wanted, but this one, if you don't hit the low E, it's movable. Okay, so David, that would be X and then um, seven, six, seven, six, eight. And that would be, technically I would call this E seven uh, sharp five. I would use the five first and then go to the nine, flat nine, something like that, okay? So hopefully that gives you a couple of variations you can use. One kind of an open position if you want, and then one up here that's more movable. Obviously, this isn't movable. Okay, so um, I think I think this. Oh, let me look at the. Uh, what did it say? My yeah, it says my upload speed six point uh, six point one. So that's pretty darn fast. So it probably just was a blip. 
Um, that's actually about twice as fast as it was. I mean, uh, yesterday it was four, and I, when I tested it a second ago, it was eight. And I'm just assuming because all the businesses are not doing business as much today. So the up, so the the because I have business, I pay extra for business speeds supposedly. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, that's a cool court. <laughs> but oh well, go for it, Rick. Um, let's see. Hello, everybody. Ab, how's it going, AB? Uh, Roger, Kathy, of course. Good to see you. Did I see all the pictures on Discord? No, I will check that. Are you guys all posting your pictures there? That's actually a better place to put them. I want to make sure that if you're sending me pictures, it's okay for me to post them up on my Facebook because I, I want to, We're going to have a graduation class when this is over. Okay, <laughs> you guys are be the class of 2020. <laughs> Tom Straley University or whatever we're going to call it. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to call it. Um, and then I, uh, I'm i going to change. We're, we're still doing finger picking today and we're still going to do Giuliani studies, but I'm going to change my plan here. I lied yesterday. I'm not going to go to the next one in group one. I am going to go to um, the first one in group four, which is uh, very much like the ones we've already done. I've already written it out. Um, and remember the ones we did, those were in kind of triplet. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, one, two, three. And the other version, the the uh, thumb middle index. It's really working your thumb too. I mean, your thumb is getting some real skills here and you don't have to move your thumb around. There's no reason you can't. And also the G7, so the C chord we're using, you know. The G7, you can either do this one, but if it's too hard for you, simplify and do this one. I'm going to give you an either or. Um, two, zero, 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 one. Okay. So those those both work as G7, um, G7 over B. The thing is, is the reason I like, you know, I really want it to be G7. And I like this voicing because you have the B, which is a leading note to the C. So you have that real strong resolution, B, C, and then you have the F that resolves down to E, which is in music theory class is what's called good voice leading, right? It's got contrary. You got one moving down and one moving up. So that's really good voice leading. Parallel movement is always frowned upon. Of course, rock and roll wouldn't exist if you didn't have parallel fists, you know. Okay, now... <laughs> So, um, I, I still have uh, I still have outstanding. Let me check and see how it's almost been. What's today? The nineteenth? No, tomorrow's nineteenth. So I think as of the nineteenth, that one should be resolved, and I can hopefully post the video I did um, the the jam track I did the bluegrass one. It still says copyright claim, and that's the one where I'm just like jamming on D, you know, like that, so you can play along with it. And I got a copyright infringement from two songs I'd never heard before. And I literally recorded and wrote that chord progression. It said, I copyrighted the melody. And I'm like, there's no melody. It's just me playing, banging out chords. And I intentionally did it with two guitars on left and right. So they wouldn't match exactly. And I even used two different guitars. Um, and then I used a drum loop, which sometimes that can trigger uh, some copyright issues if you use the same drum loop as somebody else. But it, uh, but the thing was, both these songs were from the one was from the 50s and one from the 60s. So they didn't have drum loops back then. Uh, so that was did I. Oh, I did air quotes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Cheers. Good catch. Good catch. Who caught that? Oh, Pepper, you caught, I thought you were just going to sleep on the sofa. <laughs> so. Anyway, just so you know, the rest of the day I'm frowning. OK. <laughs> Somebody said, man, you're always so happy. I'm like, no. And the rest of the day, I'm like, that's why I gave you my grumpy get out of my yard face on the photo, the screenshot. No, I'm happy all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. You can fall asleep, Pepper. It's fine. You got migraines, too. I had a little bit of a migraine this morning because I ate popcorn. We watched a movie last night and had ate popcorn. And then I went to bed and I always wake up with a headache if I have popcorn the night before. And I forgot to put on a humidifier. I have a humidifier for that very purpose in my in our bedroom. Just to get, oh, I had popcorn. I better put on the humidifier. If I have the humidifier on, I wake up no headache. So weird. Um, so, so what? Um, 
we've been doing is uh, with the finger thing is I've been using Giuliani arpeggios. I wish I had the cover to this. This thing is so old. Um, I think we found some, uh, you guys posted it. Um, where's the first page? Yeah, you can see the first page here. Um, and that's, of course, in uh, that's Italian, right? Is anybody Italian here? A uh, Beppe, Beppe, Beppe is a Beppe. Are you here? That's Italian, right? Um, I mean, it's very, very similar to uh, Spanish, so it may be Spanish. Poor, poor, for, yes, is Spanish. Um, and then the fingering letters are Spanish. The P for pulgar. Although I, I just found out that in French, P is also thumb. I mean, the thumb, the word for thumb starts with P. Um, so it could be French too. And so what I want to do is we did. So this is the first group. There's 120 arpeggios. And arpeggio is just a classical music term for finger picking pattern. On piano, arpeggios, they don't call them finger picking patterns. But on guitar, we call them finger picking patterns. And don't forget to do the like, the thumbs up if you can. Somebody said that, I think, right? Well, I'll tell you later the movie we watch. Actually, I'll tell you two movies. The day before, we watched a really good movie. Uh, and, and last night, we watched a movie. It was just on, you know just on TV. Uh, oh, look at all those thumbs ups. That was fast. Uh, boy, you guys do exactly what I tell you to do. Okay, everybody stand up. <laughs> okay, now sit down. At church, when I was leading worship one time, I had, you know, I was, I was late. Well, I led every weekend. <laughs> but one day I was just messing with, <laughs> pastor got so mad at me. It was so funny. I was like, okay, let's stand and sing. And then everybody stood up. Like I had like 1500 people stand up and I went, Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, everybody sit down. And everybody sat down. I said, okay, everybody stand up again. The band is losing it. <laughs> and the pastor was like, don't do that. And I'm listening, well, that, what power I have. This is like, holy cow. Um, it was pretty fun. So um, so we're doing, so we started with, there's, a, there's like I said, 120. I think there's, I don't know, maybe 12 groups total. I'm not sure. Uh, there's 12. I think it's 12. I see 12. Um, and we started with the second pattern oops, second pattern in group one and, and the third pattern in group one. I didn't do the first one. I'm actually going to recant and, re, and we're going to do this one. It's very, very simple, but it's not because you're actually going to be doing a claw thing where you're grabbing all, th you're grabbing three notes at a time. And so that's something that, that's a different skill and we're going to need that skill. So that's why Giuliani started with that. And so we're going to do that one, and then we're going to skip to number four and do the number one one because it's very, very much like um, the number. It's a, it's it's kind of a, a grouping of four sixteenth notes version of the first one we did. This one was a triplet here. One, two, three, two, two, three, one. Yeah, triplet. And so now we're going to do we're going to do a sixteenth note version. And of course, this is faster than we're going to need to go. But that's what that's what we're going to learn today, as well as the. That's actually a really valuable skill to have, and it's not something you would sit down and work on necessarily. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do those two. Um, and I need to write that out. In fact, I need to print out because I didn't. Um, I need to hold on. Give me a second. I'll print out. I, I wrote out the. The 16th note one. And one of the things that I want you to, again, I'm showing you this in music, not tab. If you want to buy a version of this, um, try uh, to find one that doesn't have the tab. You're only having to learn two chords. Okay. These are the, these are the only notes you need to know for C and these are the only notes you need to know for G. And to be honest, you don't even need to be able to know how to read these notes. You can just see the range. Oh, that's the lowest note. And this is the second highest note. And that's the highest note. Boom. You can see and so what you'll start to see is you'll, you'll start reading. I see, I want, I'm always trying to sneak in more knowledge uh, with, with some skill that you're getting. I'm trying to give you more knowledge. Um, and this is real useful knowledge if you are interested in doing music, A, as a living, or if you are interested in studying classical or jazz, because both classical and jazz, much of the music out there is does not have tab. Uh, rock is almost always tabbed out. Um, and tablature is basically a numbering system. And the good thing about tablature is it tells you where to play something. The bad thing about tablature is it doesn't have the rhythmic notation uh, as much as, you know, they can add rhythmic notation to tab, and I've seen that done. Um, but yeah, it initially, you know, the basically idea is just realize, look, we got a very simple chord here. 
a very simple chord here. And you're just, just read the range. You don't need to read the specific notes uh, because you're going to start to see patterns develop. And then you'll be, before you know it, you'll be reading music and you don't even realize you're reading music because mm -hmm. we're really only doing very, very small. But the cool thing about these two chords is that between these two chords, we almost have every note. In fact, do we have every note? Well, we don't have the F here. Okay. And here's our, if you want to do a screenshot of this, this is our, you know, you know, grade school, first day of music class, F-A-C-E and every good boy deserves fudge or every good boy does fine. Um, and then um, the, 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 the goal is for these, the, these finger picking patterns um, to, to give you skills. Man, my nails are dirty. Okay, I changed shirts. <laughs> if, it, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't change. I would be wearing the same shirt probably five days in a row. So I'm admitting that. And then <laughs> I'm clearly not showering every day. I don't know. Is anyone really showering every day? <laughs> I mean, our water bill is going to be nice and low, which is good. But dang, <laughs> my nails are filthy. <laughs> um, so so the, the, uh, the patterns though, that we're developing are giving you skills. And then some of these patterns are usable in um, uh, it, it usable for finger style stuff, for pop stuff, for learning old songs, you know, uh, songs like uh, Dust in the Wind or, you know, Beatles songs or, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, we were talking about Paul Simon, you know, Simon and Garfunkel songs. There's so many great songs. Okay. Oh, you can't shower. You're not allowed to shower every day in India. That's too bad. So one of the things that I got, I got a lot of work. Um, what, you know, a lot of my early session work was playing acoustic guitar and I didn't get my first acoustic till I was like 30. Uh, but I had nylon and I studied classical guitar and a lot of things I got called for were for finger picking and finger style stuff. And it's really funny because I, I got all those skills because I studied these very, very lessons that I'm showing you right now and the skills we got. And I, you know, there's, I'm going to basically show you, we're going to learn, in my opinion, the best of the um, Giuliani arpeggios and the ones that are going to give you the most skills that you can transfer and use. But what, like I say, when I'm doing finger picking stuff, um, I'm trying to think of, I wish I could remember this. Um, there was a song I wrote. Uh, I can't remember, but I, I know uh, basically I'm more interested in creating a beautiful accompaniment and a melody together and not specific patterns. So ultimately what, what we're gonna do here is not have specific patterns. So let's let's review, we're at 17 minutes, so we should really get going. Uh, the first one we did was thumb, middle index, thumb, middle index, thumb, middle index, thumb, middle index. So P, M, I, P, M, I, P, M, I. And I'm sorry, that's wrong. The other way around. Thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle. P, I, M, P, I, M. This one was P, M, I. I was holding the wrong, I was holding up the wrong one. That's the second one we learned. And can you see, like looking at these, like, oh, you can totally see the similarity. In fact, if you knew this one, you might be able to figure out this one. It's kind of like a game or something. Um, it's interesting, the, the, the aperture changes on the camera when I hold those up. Um, so uh, so the new one, well, let's, let me show you. Let's go over the old ones again real quick. And um, the two chords are C. So third finger on the third fret, second finger on the second fret, open G. First finger on the first fret and open E. So top five strings. And we're not even going to use the bottom string on this. So if you don't have a, you only have five strings on your guitar, you might be able to do this. Um, and then the second chord that we're playing is G7 over B. Okay. So it's a G7 chord and the B is in the bass instead of a G. And so that second finger on the second fret, open D, open G. Pinky, I have my pinky on the third fret of the, of the B string, second string. And your first finger is on the F. So what we're doing is... Thumb is going to move like that. So fifth string, fourth string, third string. And that's pretty much true of all these patterns so far. And then we're going to follow that up with, I'm trying to get as much light on here as possible. Index and then middle. So thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb, index. And then change chords and it might you might have to pause to change chords if you're having to pause too much you can just stay on the c chord 
Because remember, the only thing we're really concentrating on working on is your right hand. In fact, you could even just do it with no strings or no no chord. You can just. In fact, if you got to answer emails at work with with your left hand, you can totally do that. Yeah, I'm working. Now, the hard part, in my opinion, on this pattern is to is to go back to the C note twice. So you're going C, E in the bass, G in the bass, and then C again. There's your pattern. The temptation is to just go C, E, G, C, E, G. And that would be a pattern that would be in 3-4. A triplet fat pattern in 3-4, so you could call it 9-8. Don't worry, no quiz on this. Um, I'm going to touch my face so we can all take drinks because yesterday I went 45 minutes without doing anything that allowed you to take a drink. So we have a drinking game. I, I see 42 people on right now. We have a drinking game. Probably no one is new here, but if you're new, the drinking game is if I touch my face, if I refer to myself in the third person, if I use air quotes, if I change guitars, uh, let's see, if I say I had a band in high school called, if I pick up a guitar and don't realize the tuning, somebody's got to archive. Have we archived this yet? We got to get these. <laughs> we got to get the. Someone's got to archive this, and then I I, I nominate uh, Verdi. Is Verdi here? To, yeah, Verdi's there. I nominate Verdi to archive this, so you can post it every day. You know, like every like thirty minutes, repost, copy and paste it on there, so we know the rules. Um, but anyway, the the, uh, the <laughs> that way we stay hydrated. Except Verdi, who's de well, of course, caffeine is supposed to dehydrate you, but I don't believe it because sometimes that's all I drink all day. <laughs> so I'm not dying of dehydration. Um, cold makes arthritis. Yes, it does. And we're gonna be um, we're gonna be hot next week here. I may actually have my window open next week. It's gonna be in the high 80s next week. So I'm glad that high 80s, 80s, high weather. <laughs> Verdi, we can't have – Kathy's already too busy. She's already got too much – I already give her too much uh, – well, we could do Pepper. Pepper could do it. Or David. David, you could totally do it. Right. Exactly. Okay. So – and then also somebody was asking me about the live chat. Of, can I make sure I post the videos with the live chat still there? Um, it was interesting because I'm not doing anything to, to allow it or not allow it. Um, and I went back and looked at yesterday's video and the live chat wasn't there. It was all like other videos on the, on the right hand side. And then I went to the video like three, four days before and the live chat was there. And then I went to the video two days ago and it was there. And I went to the video the day before and it was there. And then I went to the video that yesterday's video and it was there. So I'm not sure what happened, but I'm not doing anything to allow it or disallow it. Um, I know that I think you have the option to either have the, it's like this weird thing where you can see all of the chat or the top chats. I don't know how you, something is determined top. Um, but anyway, um, hopefully the warmth will come soon. Um, so the other pattern that we did was in, it was thumb, middle, I'm sorry, thumb, middle, index. So we're plucking the thumb on the fifth string and then the first string with the index or the middle finger. And then the second string with the index. So we I'm playing a little faster so you can kind of hear what it's going to sound like. It turn towards the microphone. Now hear that in your head and look at this and it looks like it sounds. With tab, that's not true. But with music, you can actually look at a piece of music and you can start to hear it in your head just by looking at the music, because you can see, oh, low note, high note, you know, low note, high note. You can kind of hear that that thing. And so that's what's going on. OK, so what we're going to do now, I have to print up another piece of paper because I want to do that grabby one, which is technically I'm going to rewrite out this here. OK, this very, very first one right here. I try not to cover with my finger. And it's just going to be it's going to be do this with me. Grab make the C chord. We're not going to change chords. Let's just stay on the C chord. So we're gonna grab, put our finger, a thumb on the fifth string and our two fingers on their strings, the second string and the first string, and just pluck them all. Just pull your hand away all at the same time, like that. You can kind of close your fingers like this to kind of create a claw effect. And then move the thumb down a string and do it again. And then move the thumb down another string and do it again. And then move the thumb down to the, the fifth string again. Remember it's C, E, G, C. 
to try it. One, three, five, one. Holy, holy, holy. To try it. C E G C. Now, if you're better, if you, this is easy, then change chords. And back and forth. I'll go slower. And that might take a minute. Yeah, I got pants. <laughs> Next week, we'll see. I don't even wear shorts. I never wear shorts, though. Okay, so let me write that out. I'm going to have to uh, print up another sheet of music for that. Uh, where is that? I got a folder with all this stuff in it. And I got to work on some music today. Um, I do have a song coming out. Well, I knew there's a record coming out on May 1st with one of my songs on it um, that I, <laughs> I'm not going to be promoting. <laughs> I don't have any control over what gets written on top of my, the songs that I, you know, when I, when I, when I'm writing with especially young, young kids, you know, writers. Uh, and this kid is this kid. Uh, he didn't write the top line. Somebody else did, but, uh, and the, by top line in the music business, that's generally referred to as the melody and the lyrics. So really, <laughs> my opinion, most of the song. Um, in fact, when I uh, wrote Home to Mama with uh, Justin Bieber and uh, Justin's manager Scooter showed up, I said, hey, you know, can we talk about splits? And he's like, OK, you know, like, who are you <laughs> kind of thing? And, and uh, here we go. This is what I need. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print up like three of these. Um, I said, hey, I want to, um, uh, you know, I, I, I should get, um, I want to give Josh, my buddy who called me, I want to give him 5% and then I'll take 30 and I want Josh, uh, Josh to get 65%. And he goes, why? And I go, well, I feel like the lyrics and the melody are worth one third each. And then what I wrote, the accompaniment is worth one third. And so that's kind of how I, you know, divide it. Sometimes I've been where I've written the accompaniment, somebody's written the top line and it's been 50-50. And I'm fine with that too, because that hey, I get more of that way. But I, you know, I try to be one of my edicts is to be generous in this business. And of course, because I gave Josh five percent, he's been very good to me. I mean, that was a very small token on my part. And um, I'm just going to write these out real quick. Um, and uh, and Scooter <laughs> Scooter goes, well, that's <laughs> that's very generous of you. <laughs> And I thought he was being sarcastic. I thought it was like, yeah, yeah, you're not getting, you're not getting 30%. You're getting 2% or something like that. And then I found out later that like all of the Scooter's staff, they were all like telling me later when I was meeting with them and stuff, they were like, no, Scooter loves you. He was blown away by how generous you were with Justin. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm like, I, I, that was, oh, you know what? I don't need to write these. Okay. So I'm just going to write. Boom, 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 boom. And I get a red bar and then this. So anyway, I, I, I try to be generous in everything. Um, you, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's the Christian thing to do. Uh, there's a lot of you that would say it's good karma, and I totally don't disagree with that. What goes around comes around, and that's definitely true and that's actually has biblical foundation so it's not just a karma thing it's true for all religions i believe it's it's a it's an edict or a a belief in most religions that you know do good and it'll come back around although the christian edict is different because i think the christian edict, Teaching is that do good, but don't expect anything in return. And that's exactly what I do. I really try not to expect any anything in return. And then if you get something, it's a blessing. Um, so here's so here's that what I just played. The C and then the G7 over B. Sorry, I didn't mean to, to go into I had a band. Oh, OK. Oh, a, abs taking care of it. OK. Number four. OK. So rule, touch, oh, is that actually touching face? That's awesome. Third person, had a band, uh, unknown tuning, air quotes, a change guitar too, Ab. I think if I change guitar, if I go from a, like one acoustic to a different acoustic or one electric. So here's what I just did. 
Okay, and these so these are played at the same time. See, because they're written on top of each other. Again, that's one of those things in music where you can really, you can see what it sounds like. That really, I that's the thing I love about music notation. Um, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. If you're not using it, you're not going to remember it. You know, like you could learn, spend the summer learning how to read music. And then if you don't do it again for two years, you're probably never going to remember what you learned. It's kind of like learning French or something. You know, it's, it's, you're just not going to remember. Oh, sorry. Too fast. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Screenshot. And this is the very, 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 very first arpeggio in the Giuliani arpeggios. Boom. Number one in number one. Okay. It's the same there. So, and also notice this, this little symbol here. Um, if you can see that, I can make it big here so you can, you can see it. Basically, it's two lines with two dots on, on bracketing. That just means repeat. So just keep doing it. <laughs> Maybe forever. Uh, Actually, technically, if you just see that, it just means repeat once. But really, what we want you to do is repeat it until you got it. Repeat it until you don't need it. I don't know. That's not really a saying. <laughs> okay. So there's. So now we have technically three patterns. Okay. One that's just the stack chords, and then two tr different kind of triplet feel. All right. Oh, if I have to tune a twelve string, forget it. <laughs> What is it? That, what do they say about 12 strings? You spend half your time tuning them and half your time playing out of tune. <laughs> okay, so now we've got that. And now we're going to learn the new one, which is going to be 16th note. So here's a 16th note has a double bar line like this. Okay. Um, and this is one measure. This is called a measure or one bar, you could call it. Okay. In music. And um, there are 16 16th notes in one four four bar. No quiz. Don't worry. Um, take a sip. Chopping off my head. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, so if we count these, there's 16. See, notice how I group them in fours. And the reason you do that, you could join these bars all together. Sometimes I see bars like grouped like eight together. But really, the reason they do this grouping like this is so that you can see the beats go by. This is one beat. This is two, three, four. So the first one of these 16th notes in this group of four of them is the down beat. One, two, three, four. And one way we can count 16th notes would be one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. no quiz. Don't worry. We're gonna, I'm going to say I'm going to say the same thing to you probably 10 times. And then the 10th time, you'll be like, oh, I understand it now. Why does he keep saying it? I understand, Tom. Stop telling me. Okay. And so the, the fingering on this, I'm just going to write the first one. It's going to be P, thumb, index, middle, index, P-I-M-I. -I. And so if you have the other ones down, you probably can look at this and go, wait a minute. I see what we're doing. We're playing the thumb on the fifth string. This is the second string note. We're going to the first string note and back to the second string note. Before we just did the first three notes. Now we're adding that index finger again, okay? And 16th notes, they don't have to be fast. If the tempo is one, two, <laughs> three, then those 16th notes are going to be, I don't, I don't even know if I can play 16th notes that slow. Because it's like, you got to hear all those subdivisions. Just because it's a 16th note doesn't necessarily mean it's really fast. There are a lot of bebop songs that, um, uh, you know, at 320 beats per minute. I mean, that thing, you know, and that's your quarter note. Um, and so the tempo determines the speed of the note. Now, yes, at the same tempo, these, if these were at the same tempo, this would be quarter notes and these would be 16th notes. These would be four times as fast as this, but if this tempo were 300 or let's say, let's pick a round number of 200, then at 50, a tempo of 50, then these would be the same speed. Okay. Does that make sense? 
So the tempo sets the speed of something, not necessarily the type of note it is. However, compare in the same tempo, if this were the same song, eighth notes are going to be half as fast. Uh, quarter notes are going to be half as uh, half as fast as the eighth notes and so on and so forth. Okay. So get a good look at this. If you want to take a picture, do it. I'll get my face out of here so you don't have to crop out my mug. I told you the other night we watched Roman Holiday and Beth says, you've always reminded me of Gregory Peck. And I went, wish. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, it's, it's not how many me per measure, it's how fast the tempo is. The tempo is how fast is the song. That's a pretty slow tempo right there. So one, two, three, four, six, 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 six. I could have a tempo that fast. That'd be a ridiculously fast tempo. I've seen them. <laughs> Charlie Parker would do that all the time. I mean, they had songs at 300, you know. Um, and when I did my, um, I started transcribing Charlie Parker tunes when I was in high school, in junior high. And I didn't know the tempos were that fast. I was hearing them as ha half the tempo that they were. So I'm hearing like things at, at 150 or whatever. So I wrote out everything as 16th notes. But the reality is when I got the, the real transcriptions, I go, they're all written in eighth notes because the tempos are at 300. So it, it, you know, mine looked insane and theirs looked easy, but it, it was, they both were insanely difficult. So I kind of have an inbuilt, somewhat of a built-in tempo thing, but I, I tend to rush and I tend to get ahead of the beat. So I love having a, a metronome in my ear when I'm, well, with, when I'm recording, I, you know, always, almost always do. Oh, I touched my face. Cheers. <laughs> Boy, Ab, that's awesome. Sip rules. Those are great. Had a band in high school. Yep. Ab's got, Ab's got us covered here. So we got six rules now. Uh, we're trying to get to the Tom Commandments, somebody said. Who said that? That was pretty funny. Yes, 16 per measure. You're right, though, Chris. That's right. Um, so 16th notes would be 16, it, assuming you have a 4-4 four, four bar. If it's a 3-4 bar, there would only be 12, right? Three quarter notes times 4 16ths per quarter. There's no quiz on this. Don't worry about this stuff. Okay, so this pattern, let's get the... Let's get the C chord out. Hit, hit the bottom note. In fact, let's just do the bottom note. Don't worry about moving your thumb. Let's just get the, the interaction between the thumb and the index and middle, okay? So we're going to go thumb, index on the second string, middle on the first, and again, index on the second string. Sorry. A little bit of gas. <laughs> That's the pattern. Thumb, first, second, first. P, I, M. I just do that with me. I'll do it for a while. What are the two horizontal lines in the last notation? Uh, on this one? Yeah, I, I don't think I've seen Bird yet. I'm, I need to look it up and see if it's on any of the streaming because I don't think I ever saw it. I, I mean, I would. Um... <laughs> no, I already said, Deej, that we can't do a rule on it because I say that all the time. Because I don't want you guys to get discouraged. I want you to don't focus on the minor things. But we're, I'm trying to give you big picture stuff here, okay? So mm -hmm. that's why I say that all the time because I really don't want you to like kind of zone out because I'm getting too technical or too jargony. Um, and that's why I say that. So, um, Tom's <laughs> name for Tom's homies. Yeah, we need a we need a college name for the college, the university here, Australia University. I don't think it's gonna cut it. Uh, hey, from Greece, welcome. God bless you guys. I need to go to Greece. I've never been to Greece. I hear it's amazing. I have so many friends that have been and they just love it. Oh my gosh. In fact, I have some friends that are supposed to take a cruise in the Mediterranean in September and. I'm wondering if it's going to happen. I don't know. We'll see. 
she's a bit of a, it's a couple friend of ours and she's a bit of a, a germaphobe. So I'm like, I'm shocked that they like to take cruises. Okay. So somebody asked me about some horizontal line. Uh, I'm not sure what horizontal line, vertical lines. Uh, so who was that? Um, it got, you guys are chatting so much. Got, Flight of the Bumblebees is very fast. Exactly, Pepper. Uh, oh, DK had a question. <laughs> oh, right. The Apex Legend thing. I didn't say it. <laughs> you guys, that could be rule seven, right? Air quotes is the newest rule. Uh, oh, the, oh, the vert. Oh, these, these, yes. Those are flags. Now, if you were to have a 16th note by itself, it would look like a flag. But these just connect the notes together and tell you they're 16th notes. These were eighth notes. And they're, see, those are eighth notes. And since they're groupings of three, though, this would be actually kind of a triplet. So, um, but yeah, you could have 32nd. I've seen 64th notes, which would, 64th notes would actually have four lines. One, two, three, four. That would be crazy. But those are, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, so these are 16th notes. And you can see all of these are eighth triplets, right? All of the group one, dang it, it can't get enough light on there, but anyway. And then this is group, this is group number four that we're gonna, this new one is from. And you can see they're all 16th notes. See the double stems. That's it all in this book. I mean, that, it's all 16ths or eighths. It's not gonna have any 30 seconds or 64ths. Um, and I, uh, I need to look for, uh, see if I can find this version of this. And then I can post that in, um, I need to, because I did, I actually found this exact version of this that I posted the link to, right? Um, I think, I think uh, Pepper wanted to know, know that. Um, and this was the other thing when I studied classical guitar that was kind of mandatory. This was the Segovia scales. And I spent, you know, gosh, you know, an hour every day playing these things. Um, and it was, you know, you know. It's just a lot of work. Um, so, okay. So, okay. Catching up. Catching up on. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, as always, uh, Kathy, for hipping me to someone's question. I apologize. I'm not looking over here as much. I'm trying. I, I try not to because a lot of times you guys are just saying hi and talking about not taking showers. <laughs> so, I really need to look at that. Uh, and it's also very squirrely over here. And this, this is my squirrel moment. And then, you know, I, I, am glad that the suit, the chat shows up though on the rebrought, you know, on the, when it, when I post it, because uh, that way, you know what I'm referencing, but sometimes, I, and I don't, I don't always remember to repeat the question. I'm like, Oh, David. Yeah, sure. Yes. The answer is yes. And then you're like the answer to what? And then you got to look for that thing. So I, I apologize. I'm really, that's like a bad, I'm a bad host. <laughs> Uh, so I'm trying to do it. Oh, they're posting pictures. Oh, should I do the, I can open up the, and do a, a I'll open up the, um, do, 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 the Discord here. Um, you guys are all on Discord. And you guys are all commenting there too, I think, right? At the same time. So I can create a invite thing. So copy. Is it okay to post this? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. See, there's all sorts of new stuff going on. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's supposed to be <laughs> Verdi. Verdi, there you go. Change the guitar. You got him right there. Okay, I see it. All right, you got it. Yeah, Gary, I grabbed that picture. I have that picture that you posted. Yep, and David, I have yours. I have that one. Bruce, that's an awesome. I think I got that one. That may be a new one. Uh... Oh, and I got a new mic stand. I really like it. Was ama it's amazing. It's very well built. And it wasn't that expensive. I got it on Sweetwater. I'm going to post a link to that. I'm going to add it to my links. So here's the invite. So because I can post. So DK, you were asking. Um, I can post links. Nobody else can. So that's. Oh, you got a new guitar, Chris. What'd you get? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna do that pattern that we just did with the fifth string and the top two strings. We're gonna go ahead and move the thumb around. Okay, so we're gonna go thumb here, 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 and here. 
and that's the pattern. Remember, we have to hit the bottom string twice, or, or the fifth string twice. Fifth string, fourth string, third string, fifth string, and then fifth string. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change. It's gonna sound a little weird if you don't change with me, but that's okay. Uh, if you want to stay on C chord and really concentrate on the right hand, do that. But if you if this is no problem for you, then go ahead and change with me, okay? <clears throat> nice, nice, Chris. Congratulations, happy new gear, happy new guitar day. Here, here we go. Ready? Thumb first, second first. Thumb first, second first. P I M I B. Change chords. Same strings on the bass. And at this tempo, this is a very slow tempo. I'm not hearing the quarter note, I'm just hearing 16th notes in my head. I'm not. And again, the reason we want to hit that bass note twice is to really set up the next chord. That C wants to go to B. And that F on top wants to drop down to D, sorry, drop down to the E. Sometimes it's hard to talk and play at the same time. However, I've always said, you know you have something down when you can talk and play at the same time. Hey Dan, welcome. And AJ, is AJ here? Thanks for the super chat yesterday. I was watching uh, Rick Beato <laughs> doing his live stream yesterday. Man. He spent half of the lesson thanking people for super chats. I'm like, how much is he making? <laughs> it's like, oh, thanks for the super chat. How much? Oh, thanks for the super chat. He couldn't say anything. Oh, I got I got the sound up on. <laughs> That's funny. I got the sound up on. I gotta turn that off. Okay. Wow. Oh, you hear that? That's the uh um that's the Discord. Okay. So um That's all right, Kathy. Um, and here's, you know, again, in fact, I'm dropping a video today. It's, it's talking about one of the most common questions I get. How do I change chords faster? And again, it's a beginner question. I'm going to do, so it's, I called it, it's kind of a, it's hard to name some of these videos. Really hard. And Beth is, my wife is an editor. Like she edits, you know, documents and papers and books and all this stuff on top of teaching. But um it's kind of one of the things she does on the side and likes it. If you know anyone that's got a book they need edited, let, you know, contact me and I can put them in touch with Beth. Um, but the, the, uh, um, she, you know, she couldn't come up with anything better. And I, I had, I had, a, I called it, let's see, seven tips to change chords faster. And I just hated that. And it just wasn't, just didn't feel right. And I went and looked for other videos like it. And what did they call them? And I didn't like any of their names. And I went ahead and I went ahead and bounced it from iMovie and, you know, cause it has the opening like uh, pull focus, you know, where it says what the name of the video is at the beginning. And I can always change the name of the video on YouTube. No problem. I can upload a new, uh, you know, card for it and also change the name easily. You know, anytime I want, I can change the name 10 times a day if I want. Um, but once I print the video, that's always going to be the same. So I have a couple of videos where, oh, I'm going to close Discord. It's making noise. Um, I have a couple of videos where I've actually, the, the name of the video, when you look at it on YouTube, is different than the name of the video when you actually watch the video. Uh, just slightly different. And so I actually uploaded it, was all ready to go. And then I went, oh, I thought of a better name. So I had to rebounce it with a new name. And what I just called it was... Um, I said it's called seven tips to help you play or change chords faster. And then it says in yellow letters, it'll say uh, beginner edition. And then I'm going to do another one uh, that's seven exercises to help you change chords faster. And it'll be intermediate edition. And that one is going to be like, uh, I'm going to, you know, little exercises that are musical that actually might have some use. Um, and uh, and so that's so that as soon as we're done, I'm going to post that video. So you'll see, you'll probably get in a, a, a little uh, notification that I posted a new video. Uh, for some of you, it might be real handy. So one of the rules, though, I say, Kathy, and this is all this is, I'm long-winded me way of me saying, 
just play the C and then change to the G over uh, the G over seven over B. And one of the things I say is look at the paths that your fingers are taking. Like your second finger is moving up one. The goal is to move every finger at once. And one of the tips I do, and I've done this for years, but one of the things you do is like on the G, G7 over B chord, lift the strings off the frets and then push again and then lift them off and push again. Or you can even lift your fingers a little off the strings and then push again and do it again and get a little further every time and cut and get your hand further. And then what happens is your hand starts to make the shape before your fingers go down. And then you can just go blah, 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 do that and then make the chord. And it's not an easy, that's a, this is a hard shape. If you want to get, again, if you want a simpler version of this, you could just go X two zero 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 one. That's the same chord. The only thing here is we have two Bs. So then we, when we go to C, we have parallel mo motion. <laughs> I, I didn't need to use air quotes because it actually is parallel motion. <laughs> so what was it? Uh, Joey, how does Joey on Friends use air quotes? He uses, it's funny because he actually uses them to say something true. It's like, this is my guitar. <laughs> That's why I like using air quotes when I say air quotes, because it's just, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Cheers, everyone. Okay, Verdi, we should be up to 20 seconds between cigarettes now. <laughs> I, I've decided I'm going to give up on you, and I'm not going to make you wait 20 minutes between cigarettes. Verdi's a chain smoker. We're trying to get him to quit. So I, we're, we, I was initially trying to get him to go 10 minutes between cigarettes, and he said he couldn't go 10 seconds. I go, okay, let's go to 10 seconds between cigarettes. Okay. <laughs> I was up to 55 there for a second. <laughs> yeah, 20 seconds you can pull off, right? <laughs> he says, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> that's freaking brilliant. That's such a great show. We're actually friends with, uh, 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 shoot, um, Courtney Cox's sister, Dottie. And I've known Dottie for, gosh, I've known Dottie for 35 years. Um, and uh, before Courtney was anybody. You know, Courtney was actually on, when I met Dottie, Courtney was on Family Ties. I don't know if you remember that Courtney Cox was on Family Ties as uh, uh, his girlfriend. So, air quote sip. Um, mm. Take another sip because I'm itching my nose. Oh, and Kathy, I haven't had any problems um, with um, with the um, uh, with with you know, uh, advertising thing. Now, actually, I, I actually had to, with my new video, they made me go through the whole protocol um, where I, I can go through and they've got all these categories. Do I have any language issues? Is there any nudity or partial nudity or anything like that? You know, so I can go through all that and just say no to all. And that was a new thing. I had never seen that, but they're basically setting it up so that they're going to trust me, <laughs> which is dangerous. They're going to trust me to police my own videos. But that's why we try to keep the chat clean because I don't know what triggers. So, Kathy, if you say even the mildest of naughty words, Kathy will probably delete it just, just so that does, that doesn't accidentally trigger um, the, um, the, the, you know, the advertiser police on uh, YouTube. Um, however, I do notice that even when I had restrictions on one of my videos, they still play the normal ads because the guitar lesson ads that always play before my videos, I don't think they really care about that kind of stuff. It would be like, if you know, Mattel wouldn't advertise on something, you know, a video that had inappropriate stuff, which makes sense. That's actually a service to the advertisers. So I am, like I said, I'm going to post that video today and I, I give seven tips for helping you uh, change chords faster. So if you're struggling with that, you can totally put, put that to practice. We've talked about all of them here. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to play this. I'm going to try to get a little better angle here. Um, let me play it fast so you can kind of hear like a goal. I don't know if you can hear that though. Can you Can you hear that? I need a tune. 
Um, I also want to do a video, like a review of tuners. I'd like to do that. I did that one with Alex where I did the capos. I don't know if you saw that one. Um, and that was fun. And we want to do another video on capos where we have a uh, capo anomalies. I want to do that because I got all these weird capos. I love my spider capo, you know, partial capos. I got a dobro capo, mandolin capos. Um, I even have individual string capo things that you hold up that can hold up one string. It was an invention idea that I had that I never really pursued, much like the guitar hammer I showed you. Um, oh, I need to find that, my good guitar hammer. Um, okay, now I'm in tune. So here's that pattern. Let's see if I can get. And you know, finger picking patterns are one of those things that's a lot easier to do when you relax, like anything on the guitar. I don't think the smoking thing triggers it, but maybe. Sorry, that's why I had my head cut off before, so you could see my hand. So stupid. And you really can't see the pattern from this perspective. And the shadows kind of, you know, I wonder if I could prop up. Oh, I don't have, I, the batteries are charging. Um, I'll, I've got a, I've got like one of those um, camera lights. I could put right here maybe and get some light on my hand. Because there's just not enough light coming from the window or it's a little too far behind me. Uh, but anyway, you get the idea. Um, I can give you a uh, a sneak preview of tomorrow, um, and we may learn two. Some of these are pretty easy, um, but in group four, the next pattern after the one we just I just played is the same thing you did here with inverting the index and middle. That's the next pattern. Okay, so in other words. Um, and so that, you know, we'll learn that one. And then oh, the next one's a little, uh, you know, we need to get the ring finger involved. So we may jump down to seven down here. Um, and that one is just this. So I may, and that way we start to get the ring finger involved. Okay. So I'm, I, yeah, the, we, we might do two tomorrow. I think that would be fine. Did DK quit smoking? Oh, you quit sugar six months ago. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. Although my wife does Atkins sometimes, and you really have to cut out sugar to do Atkins. And some of those Atkins, like candy bars and stuff, are great. <laughs> but I probably don't have that much sugar. But do you, do you, when you say sugar, you mean like refined white sugar, things like that. Because not, not like... Like fruit has uh, sucrose in it. You don't, uh, fructose, I mean, you don't cut out fructose. Oh, Chris, Tom posted it higher up. Uh, he went crazy as I heard a report. I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. I heard a report. Uh, that cigarette smoking actually helps you either prevent COVID or <laughs> survive it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait a minute, what? I don't know what I heard that was like, there was a study and I'm like, wait a minute, like people that smokers were surviving at a higher rate than non-smokers. I'm like, wait a minute. No, no, don't, don't, sell, don't sell that. Oh my gosh. This is probably the study was done by Philip Morris. Yeah. Well, when you do um, Atkins, you really are supposed to cut out all sugar. So fructose, sucrose, all that stuff. Uh, so it's really tough. You can't have fruits or all that, but you don't, you don't want to do Atkins for too long. I don't think it's particularly healthy. But yeah, I, I have sugar. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy if I didn't have sugar, you guys. 
Uh, but I, uh, you know, and you're going to be mad at me because I use sweet and low. That's what I use in my coffee. So I know you're like, well, no, you got to use. And I'm like, yeah, it, it keeps the cancer cells at bay <laughs> is what I say. That's my non-scientific research. It's like my sister's. My cousin, you know, all my family, they're all like health food nuts and all that stuff. And they don't, they would never, ever use sweet and low or saccharin or anything like that. And then, you know, they've all had cancer and I'm the only one that has it. So I'm kind of like, yeah, it's, I, that's my, that's my anecdotal study. Okay. So our pattern so far, let me, uh, let me put that up. Okay, let me let's do a review of what we've done so far with the finger style thing, our finger picking thing. Okay, so here's our grade school. Every good boy does fine. Fudge, see, there's a you're starting to learn the notes. But again, I'm not even asking you to memorize that because I just want you to see the fact that oh, it's the low note and then the next lowest note and then the next lowest note and these are the high notes and you can kind of just see. In fact, you can see this is a fifth string note. This is a fourth string note, the third string note, the first, second string note, and the first string note. Same thing here. So you can really start to see this is the new pattern, 16th notes. Very, very similar to kind of a hybrid of the, the two patterns we had before. This was the first pattern we learned, right? Uh, thumb and then index middle. And then this one was, okay. And, you know, there's no reason why I couldn't scan these, except my scanner's in the other room right now. I could scan these and put these all in the chat, okay? So you have these. Um, that's probably better than a JPEG that you're the ping that or whatever you're doing the screenshot. All right. So uh, what else? Hey, Mugu Mugu. Uh, Okay, Verdi, you've been looking on the, working on a song for the last two years, but it uses a similar pattern the whole song. Uh, this is a pattern I can switch to, make it a lot less boring. Yes. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are getting stuff out of this. Um, interesting. Yeah, I, um, uh, the, um, uh, you know, the, the goal is uh, to give you as many finger-picking pattern weapons um, as possible, like I always talk about the strumming grooves, and we may talk, maybe do a series on strumming grooves too. Um, I've got a series of strumming lessons on YouTube, uh, so it would probably just be re reiterating that. Um, and then uh, um, I also the other thing though is to give you uh, independence. I'm trying to think of, I'm still trying to remember that. See, I have the song, but I'm afraid if I play it, I got a Bieber song that that never got released. And it, I remember when I wrote it, was it was the day, hey, Diane, are you there? <laughs> Diane's there, okay. It was the day that Justin got served a search warrant in his house in Calabasas. So he bought a house in Calabasas next to this, I'm not going to say it, but a lawyer. And the lawyer, you know, these, the house was like a $6 million house, and the lawyer came over, like, immediately after Justin moved in, and he had two teenage daughters, and they wanted to hang out with Justin, and Justin was like, I didn't move into this double-gated community so that, you know, people would just come up to my door and, like, want to hang out. And so the guy was like, the neighbor, he's like my age. He was like a total jerk about it, and he would... Literally, Justin would get home from the studio at two or three in the morning. And the guy would come, wake up, come outside, and start yelling at him. That's how the, he's like paid six million dollars for this house, and the, the guy, the neighbor, yelled at him, right? And so, uh, and and I only know this because this neighbor bragged to someone I know about doing this. It wasn't even like something that I heard from Justin or somebody else. It was like this neighbor was actually bragging about doing this. And even TP Justin's tree in his front yard. And I'm like, really? This guy's like a 50-year-old lawyer, and he's TP in his neighbor's house because his neighbor wouldn't hang out with his teenage daughters. <laughs> it's like, what? And so anyway, so when the when the, the house got and when Justin's house got TP, Justin was like, "Oh, we're playing those kind of games." And Justin's a kid, so what does he know? He's like, "Okay, I'll egg this other guy's house." So he eggs the house, and somehow he managed to do it so that 
he didn't get caught by his own cameras. And so the police search warrant was to, to I guess, confiscate uh, security camera footage from Justin's house to see if Justin actually egged the neighbor's house. And because the, the neighbor filed a complaint with the police, like a jerk, and claimed that there was $20,000 damage to one of his doors from egg stains or something like that. So I'm sure, I think Justin paid that or so. I don't know. He had to do community service. It was like a big, just a big, stupid scam. And in fact, the TMZ reported that they found all these drugs in the house, <laughs> you know, like Molly and things like that. And they, uh, uh, I taught the, the lady who was the sheriff that showed up and served the warrant and searched the house went to my church and she said, no, they didn't find anything like that. There was one kid that was hanging out there that had a prescription for probably, uh, you know, painkiller that he, that he didn't have a subscription for a prescription for. He had, he had painkillers that he didn't have a prescription for, but that was not Justin. That was some kid in the house. And so, yeah. And so of course the lawyer, you know, he, the neighbor lawyer can do it. So <laughs> ultimately Justin got the final range. He, he sold the house to Chloe, Chloe Kardashian for like, 600,000 more than he paid for. <laughs> so now the guy's got to live next to Khloe Kardashian. <laughs> so I think that's pretty freaking funny. But anyway, the day that, the day that um, he got served, um, the, the search warrant on his house, I get a phone, I get a, I get an I, uh, a FaceTime and it's, it's from my friend Josh, but Justin is using my friend Josh's phone and it's Justin. He goes, Hey, Straley, would you write me a sad acoustic song? <laughs> And that's when I wrote the song that, uh, let's see, uh, how does it go? It was, it was, you know. did intentionally with the chords I'm always trying to do something weird different and so like you know I put the seventh on top of the E minor shape which is really G minor and then I put the sixth on top and then I put the four on top which is not part of the triad none of these are part of the triad and then I put the seventh on top and then I did this the seventh and I did the ninth and then I did the sharp 11 you know and so I'm always and he loved it. He wrote the most beautiful song over it. And uh, I wish it got released. I don't know if it got leaked. But he wrote a great song over it. It actually was on the list for the new album. It was I on the side. I saw the name of it. I go, oh, my gosh. Uh, what was it called? picking on that is somewhat of a pattern in things. Um, oh, the chord shapes are just basically E minor, E minor seven, and I'm doing like a D, D over F sharp shape, and then like a, a G sus, and then a C major seven. I know at some point I should probably do a, um, right? <laughs> um, I should probably do a tutorial on it, but it, I, I kind of want, I don't want to do tutorials until they actually get released. That one actually got copyrighted, so I don't really have to work. You know, uh, they took care of the copyright on it, so I, that one is um, protected. It was it was on it was actually on the record that he and Cody Simpson were going to do. I had five songs on that one that were that, thirteen songs total, and then that record never got released. But Home to Mama got released, and that was one of the songs that Hard to Face Reality. No, it's not Hard to Face Reality. Uh, shoot, I can't think. Let me, I, I have it on my, I have it on my phone, but I can't, I can't play it for you guys. Cause you know, a, I would get in trouble. Um, I, I don't want to burn a contact. You really, I, I, I know that people that have leaked songs are no longer working in the camp. So that, that is not something I want to risk. 
um, but it's in here. I have the, I can, I, I think I know the title, which maybe then you could find it. Um, not that. See, I've got so many of these. Uh, so many that haven't gotten released. Dang. Take a chance. Just take a chance. And I think that one has been leaked, but it was on the list, the potential list. So, and I'm touching my face. So you can all, the dream. Oh, this the writer of the dream? I know the dream. I met Justin through Kukarel. And Kukarel worked with the dream and they wrote, if you're talking about the dream, the writer, uh, the dream uh, wrote, the dream and Tricky Stewart and Kook wrote, um, uh, uh, shoot, uh, Umbrella for Rihanna, uh, which was a huge smash. It was a Kirk Kook's first big hit. And it was, uh, he bought a house with, a, with the money from that song, like outright, I think or something. Oh, now you have the ABBA song in your head? Why? Wh who said that? ABBA's great. Uh, let's see. I know, right? Do you, yeah. How do you how do you TP someone's house and not expect something something back? But anyway, uh, yeah, Peter. I don't know. Some people are just jerks. And I, I think um, I think the reason Justin bought a house in that neighborhood was because I think um, uh, Kim and uh, Kanye lived in that neighborhood. I don't know if they still do. I know where it is. It's in it's in Calabasas. It's kind of up on a hill. In fact, the fires got very close last year, I think, um, to that neighborhood. Um, but Justin hasn't lived there for a long time. He's he went from there to like a condo in Hollywood or in Beverly Hills. And then I think he's in a house in Beverly Hills now. I don't know. Never been to his house. I've never been invited. <laughs> now he's in can not in can he may be in Canada right now because I've been ugh. I follow him on Instagram and he's been doing, you know, he's cheers. <laughs> Sorry, I touched my face. He's been doing um uh lot, you know, his live stream, stuff like that. So they're just kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, which is good because you really that would be sad to have, you know, if he got sick. So take a chance on me. Yeah, that's, have you heard that song, Kathy? Oh, take a chance. No, you th oh, right. Yeah, it's the same name as, yeah, yeah, take a chance. Uh, oh, no, yeah, the uh, the ABBA song. Sorry. I, I see. Hey, Chris, see you tomorrow. Yeah, we're getting, we've, we've passed an hour. Um, sip, sip, sip. Everybody's sipping. Okay, let me see. Kathy, if I missed any questions, is there anything here that I need to be aware of? Let me look for stop signs. East End, uh, please, every time I take a screenshot, uh, I get from the desk light. Interesting. For oh, from yours or my, no, from mine. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna. You know, I can scan these and put put them in the Discord or even up on my, um, up on my uh, on the uh, Facebook page. So, and feel free to like my Facebook page. Um, you might get some notifications. I'm not really super active, so you won't get too annoyed on that. I do try to keep tabs on it though. Um. Also, what we could do is um, we could do a warm up. You guys want to do the warm up thing? Um, we could do the one, one, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. Oops, I got to click on the window here to do that. One, two, four. Okay, and those numbers refer to your fingers. One, four, two, three, four, two, four, three, four. A great warm up. I'll go really slow. One, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. And then go up a fret and do it again. It's great because every other note is your pinky. So you'll notice it's forcing me to keep my pinky out and available. Two, four, three, four. Go up a fret. One. And if you can do it faster, go ahead. Get ahead of me. You don't need to stay with me. And if you want, you can do index middle over here on the right hand. Or you can do index ring. Oops. Sorry, I messed up. Fifth fret. Pinky. Three, four, two, four. Three, four. Pink. 
David's going to do the lazy one. The lazy one is, according to David, is one, two, three, four, and then hit four again. Four, three, two, one. And when you're doing it, try to keep your pinky out. Don't tuck it away. Try to keep it out and available like you're drinking high tea with somebody from Britain. Oops. I need to come up with some uh, some some chord changing um, exercises, um, and um, I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do yet. But I've got some for my next video. But I got a video I'm going to post as soon as we're done. I'm going to post it with um, that's basically talking about seven tips to help you change chords faster, and it's for beginners. This one's I only talk about going from C to D, which I don't think I said anywhere. It's like people are going to like write me and they're going to go. So this helps me go from C to D, but what about from G to D? You know, it's like, I, I don't think I said anywhere in the video. So just do this with any other chord combination you have. So I'm afraid some people are going to think I'm only teaching about C to D and I'm going to do another video that's going to be like G to D or something like that. Uh, so the, the the seven tips that I give you can be used across the board for any two chords, uh, going back and forth between any two chords. And uh, so, so uh, Dean asked me a question. Oh, and a question, super question here. When you refer to playing over a chord, are you referring to playing the notes of the scale or no? Uh, when I refer to playing over chords, and thanks for pointing that out, because that's one of those jargonese, musicianese kind of things. Um, usually there's a chord playing, and I'm playing over it, playing a, a solo over it on top of it or something. Um, it can be the scale tones or the chord tones, but it could be whatever you want. Like if I play E7, I could play... play notes that aren't in the key of E, uh, aren't in the key of E, that aren't in the key of the chord of E7, that G natural is not, goes against the G sharp in the key, that 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 B flat's not in this chord, uh, but they all work because I'm making them work because it's blues. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say playing over a chord, um, and yes, indeed, a lot of times, a lot of you know, jazz players will, uh, we talked about when we talked about, um, uh, modes and just as a recap for this whole, this, what, what this lesson 32, right? 32 days in a row. Can you believe it? Uh, I'm committed, man. Um, so, uh, we, the first thing we did was, uh, cage method. We did that for 12 lessons. And then we talked about modes for five lessons. And one of the things you could do, like we talked about the modes in C and Technically, there could be a different mode for each C chord. So I could play C major over the C chord, and then over the A minor, I could play A minor, and then over the D minor, I could play D Dorian, and over the G7, I could play G Pixelidian. So technically, I could play a different scale over each chord. I don't generally think that way, but a lot of people do uh, when they're playing over chord changes. You know, when they when the chord changes, they play a different scale for that chord. I used to do more of that. And sometimes I do more like chord shapes or, you know, I'll do different phrases or things like that. But for the most part, I'm trying to, I'm trying to develop a melody and make something that, that is uh, appealing to the listener or compelling or moves something along. So that, that's what I mean by that. Okay. There was another question. That was a question from Ed, but um, there was another question from, uh, the, uh, that Kathy said, Deej, you can't share where, oh, Deej. Uh, could you write the chords in chat form? So yeah, I, I, I wish I could. If it was a release song, I could, uh, but I can't. Uh, let's see. Um, if it, anytime, anytime something gets released, I, I'm happy to do that um, because it's protected. But the, my, my concern is that somebody else comes along and re-records my guitar part, and then somebody writes a song over it, and they copy Justin or whatever, and I get in trouble. And I don't want to get in trouble. I want to keep working with them. They like me for some reason. So, I mean, I'm like twice as old as the oldest person that works in the camp, but they, I'm like, I could be, I could be Scooter's dad. In fact, I met Scooter's dad and he was like, he was older than me, but not much. <laughs> and we had a lot in common. We're like talking about the same things, you know? Uh, 
but the thing that I, my skill that I bring to the the camp, I think there are two things that I bring to the camp. Um, I have a really good imagination, and then I also have a really good sense of old school. Like in high school, in junior, I you know what I you know what I, you want me to I know what you want me to say, but I'm not going to say it. Uh, but I had a band in high school. We did disco music, so I was playing disco in the '70s and the '80s, early '80s. Um, and, uh, I played in rock bands too, but I did more disco than I did rock back then. And so, and everybody hated it, but we did it because it, and that's what people wanted us to play at proms and frat parties and things like that. So Verdi, you're getting old now. I, I doubt that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Verdi, oh, Verdi, you taking off? No. Oh, oh, Ab's taking off. Okay. Ab, I'll see you tomorrow. AK, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, sir, yes, sir. Okay, now wait a minute. I'm so. Uh, how do you change chords faster? Practice, <laughs> practice, and stop being lazy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my question: Why does this sound like a Bach prelude number one in C major? Why does this sound like? Oh, uh, Bach prelude number one in C major. Which what the the chord, um, the finger picking pattern, or the Justin Bieber song? Oh, you notice that your pinky on the left hand. Oh, you mean when you did this thing? That's kind of freaky, isn't it? I've been playing for how many years and how much wider I can spread my pinky out from the, my left hand to my right hand. Just I'm, I'm, I'm trying to spread my fingers as far apart as I can. Look how much more spread I have on my left hand. And that's just from doing things like this. So uh, that that's not required on the left hand. I mean, on the right hand or the picking hand or whatever. Okay, Bonnie's taking off. Uh, bye, Bonnie. My, she's already gone. I'm saying bye to someone who's not there. All right. So I'm going to take off. We're uh, and you guys can continue. I if I get a chance to scan these, um, I'll post them in the. I'll, I can put them both in the um, Discord chat. And here, oh, let me uh, post that Discord chat. Do I have that here still? Yeah, there it is. There's the mm -hmm. link to join the Discord chat. The invite. Uh, <laughs> Kathy, don't give up. Please don't give up. Uh, let's see, Rick, for practice. Uh, 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 Dietmer Steinhaus puts the chord on his sheet music, and you can just practice the chords and not the music. Yeah, and that's also true of uh, disco. <laughs> Z, I know, right? Uh, at the time, we had fun. It was fun to play at the time. It's. I'll tell you what, Z... I, this is this is true of music. I mean, when you're okay, I was I've never really been an artist. When you're an artist, you have a vision, you do what you do, and whether people accept it or not. Okay. When you're a musician, the thing you want, and I, I've I've tried to do this, you want the audience to enjoy what you're doing. So when you have good reaction from the audience, um then that means you're doing you're doing something right. And and if the audience is up and dancing and it was disco and the whole crowd, you know, the whole club was up dancing or the whole party or the prom or whatever, everybody was up dancing, uh, you know you're doing your job right. If everybody's just sitting there and they don't like the songs. There were times where we learned songs. I remember my band Malachi, um, we the bass player really wanted to learn Misunderstanding by Genesis. And there must be some misunderstanding. And so we learned the song, you know, and we brought the record and we played the record in the in the rehearsal room. And we all learned our parts. We're all listening and trying to, or we all got the records in advance or whatever. And um, we're all learning the parts. And we did it in one, we did it at one gig. And people just stood there and kind of like swayed and dangled their arms. <laughs> and it was like the most pathetic it was the worst song to do in our set, and we never did it again. It was a cool song. Genesis is a cool band. Uh, it was definitely one of their more poppy songs. It wasn't one of their coolest songs, but, uh, you know, and the same thing's true when, when I was leading worship. I always tried to put myself in the congregation, in the seats. What do they want to sing? What are they, what, you know, I always tried to sing songs, and I, I'm not a good singer, so I couldn't sing songs that were way up here and way down here. Um, and so I would pick songs that had a narrow range and that really appealed to the most. And I would get the whole church singing because it was pretty, you know, I, I 
sought songs that they wanted to do and I sought out songs that they could do. Um, so, you know, I think that that's, uh, yeah. So yeah, well, you know, disco wasn't like the best thing to be, you know, the best style of music to be doing. Uh, there was some great playing on some of that too. I mean, you listen to some of the drums on it, the hi-hat stuff and the, the bass playing on some of that stuff. Oh my gosh, it was awesome. So anyway, that's just, I'm not disagreeing with you, Z, <laughs> but at the same time, it just depends what, uh, uh, what your goal is. If your goal is to fill up rooms with people that like your music, then you got to do whatever they, whatever the majority likes. Um, and at the time that was disco. It was just disco. This is what it was. I mean, we did a lot of rock music too. Um, my high school band did disco and rock. So like we were doing a lot, we did some Toto and we did some, which was always fun to play. Um, we did, uh, gosh, uh, uh, shoot, um, what's it? Foreigner. Foreigner was great fun to play. Somewhere I have a list. I think I created like a um, iTunes, back when iTunes did playlists that you could do. Yeah, Genesis was much better when Peter Gabriel was in it, 100%. I, I, you know, I, I, I agree with that 100%. So um, let's see. Um, everyone say hi in the Discord after party. Yeah, in the after party. <laughs> Verdi. Verdi just wants to have an excuse to keep drinking and smoking. <laughs> so, uh, and then, uh, let's see. Right said Fred. Couldn't stop listening to that album. Oh, funny. I forgot about them. Yeah, that was that was kind of disco, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, Genesis reminds me of American Psycho. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Woke. Woke in the woke up in the record store in the seventies when Saturday Night Fever was released. Yeah. Oh man, that was a huge record, um, and so many hits on that record, uh, Saturday Night Fever, and that was the beginning of it all. It kind of what Urban Cowboy did a little bit too, you know. But not, you know, Urban Cowboy was ten 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 to ten years late. I mean, the the country rock got big in like 1970, right around the Beatles, when the Beatles broke up. That's when the Eagles got big and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young and Neil Young and all that stuff started really taking off. And that's what my sister was into. So I kind of got into that as well when, because my sister was into it, you know, she's my older sister. So um, let's see. Um, you still have your plastic form shoes. That's pretty darn, darn cool. Those are probably worth a fortune right now. Uh, and I think you could probably put those up on eBay and make some bank. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, was, I had weird taste. I kind of liked everything. Like I did, I was a jazz snob, like right around the time I moved to California, like 81, 82, 83, I was kind of a jazz snob. Um, and I was really, really, really focusing hard on being an LA studio musician so everything I did was focused on that. So I would buy some of the worst albums uh, just because there were L.A. session musicians on it. I remember I bought Cheryl Ladd's album um, because I saw, like, I think Jay Graydon was on it and probably Jeff Picaro was a great drummer. He was the drummer for Toto. Um, so uh, I, I, uh, uh, I really was focused on that. Of course, I was practicing so much and I was transcribing a lot of solos anything i could find with steve lukather playing the guitar solo i would transcribe it um all that stuff southern comfort um oh that's a drink <laughs> is that what you're drinking rick <laughs> so let's see maybe stallone was it his brother though because um sly stallone's brother was it that was Rhinestone Cow Rhinestone Cowboy was a different movie, or that was uh that was a Glenn Campbell song. And that was for am I confusing Urban Cowboy? No, Urban Cowboy was the was the uh Vinny Barbarino. Uh what's his name? <laughs> I can remember Vinny Barbarino, but I can't remember his real name. Uh that was that guy. Uh the Midnight Cowboy was the one that had uh Rhinestone Cowboy in it, I think. Like a Rhinestone Cowboy. It's a that's actually a really nice song. Yeah, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young were great. Um, uh, uh, although I did hear what's interesting is um, uh, it, for uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, somebody somebody played somebody I know had the original recordings of Four Way Street, which was their live album, 
and their vocals were awful. And apparently they went in and replaced all the vocals, which I don't know how hard that would have been. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, but somebody had a recording of it and they were playing it. It was like on a radio show and they were making fun of it. It's like <laughs> years ago when they were playing Paul McCartney live and they had <laughs> they had Linda McCartney's mic soloed. <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about anybody, but oh my goodness. Southern Company. Oh yeah, Deborah Winger and John Travolta. That's who was in that movie, you're right. Uh, oh yeah, and I said, oh, what movie did we watch last night? We watched Game Night. It was actually really funny. Have you guys seen Game Night? Um, it was actually pretty darn funny. It was, comedies are really hard. Comedy writing, you know, and I told you guys I've, I've written one comedy uh, uh, feature film, uh, not that didn't get made or anything. Um, and it was really, really, really of all the feature films that I've written and I've written complete four films, but I've started about 20. Um, but I finished I finished four of them. And, uh, you know, look, you're looking at like 120 pages or so, 190 to 120. Um, and the comedy was the hardest because. You're, every time you read a joke, it gets less and less funny and you start doubting your jokes and then you have to rewrite jokes. And you're like, why am I rewriting this joke when it, I don't know what it's going to be like the first time you hear, you know, I can't remember the first time I, I listened to the joke. So, um, but game night actually was pretty funny wall to wall. It's very, very difficult. So many comedies are stop being funny at about thir the third act, about an hour in, it's like, okay, the same joke over and over again. So it's really, really tough. Um, but game night was pretty darn funny. Uh, Signs last night. Yeah, that was a good movie. Uh, Signs is good. Another really good movie that we watched the other night, and it was on. Uh, it was on demand, so it, we didn't. We got to see it with no commercials. The Upside. Has anybody seen The Upside? A very good movie. Very sweet movie. Um, the Upside, and it's with uh, Cranston and uh, Kevin Hart, and it was really, really good. Uh, American Graffiti is great. It, uh, American Graffiti is great. It's, I mean, that was um, George Lucas's first film, right? And it was that money and that the success of that movie that got him to be able to make the Star Wars movies. So American Graffiti is responsible for Star Wars. That movie was hugely successful when you measure budget times profit or the the uh, book uh, the um, uh, shoot what that's what's that called. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> the sales. So what's it called? Uh, in a movie, it's called the sales. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> I can't, gosh, I can't think of the term. Uh, box office. That's what it is. The box office versus the cost. That was a huge success. Made a ton of money. And that really paid for um, paid for uh, Star Wars and, or justified the money for Star Wars, which I, there's a, there's a documentary on the making of Star Wars on Netflix right now. And we watched that a few, a uh, couple months, few months ago. And it was fascinating how, how hard it was to get that movie made. Um, and it still looks, Star Wars still looks great. The first one, it just looks great. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah. So, um, but the upside uh, was really, really, and in fact, the, the friend of mine that recommended it to me is was a, he was a uh, vice president at Sony Pictures, and uh, he goes to our church and he said, "Have you seen Upside yet?" And I said, "No." And then I saw it when I flew to um, I flew to Louisville last year and uh, at the end of last year, and uh, I watched it on the way back, and just went, "Oh, this is a great movie." I was so glad it finally went on. Um, yeah, Vir only watches cartoons. <laughs> yes. The, uh, the uh, upside is uh, based on a French uh, story and a French. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the French, the original French one, too. Um, yeah, check out the upside. It's very it's a really, really sweet movie in a lot of ways. I mean, it's a, little, a couple scenes, but yeah, there's a couple scenes that are a little uh, edgy, but that's all right. Just make sure the kids aren't in the room. <laughs> in fact, Alex watched it with us and he was sitting in between Beth and I and and it was like awkward and he's like ah whatever you know he's used to my family so it's not really that bad oh what oh what was ab's question <coughs> you're bored well i'm glad i can i can spare you from bored you're not we're down to 34 there's not many people on right now because i'm not really teaching right now uh we're just talking uh ab what was your question you gave uh, let's see where's ab let's see we see okay it was way back there right in fact kathy you gave me a 
a stop sign to tell me question. No, that was a question from Ed. I had a question, but but it's it's that gray, okay? And and I mean, uh, oh, okay. My question: Why does this sound like Bach Prelude Number One? I'm not sure what you're referring to, but maybe the um, AB. I'm not sure if you're referring to the. Oh yeah, the fingers up. Yeah. Very much so. There's a lot of Bach things that that use that pattern or uh, similar patterns. So we're gonna we're gonna hit on a bunch of them, but. I think we're going to do that one tomorrow. So we're going to bring in the ring finger tomorrow, okay? We really want to get some... Now, if this is easy for you, if these patterns are easy for you, what I want you to do is I want you to pick, um, in the case of this 16th note pattern, okay, if that's like, okay, Tom, I understand this. I've been doing this for years. I know what I'm doing. Then if you really want to take it up another level, okay, um, then what you do is um, you accent different beats. So uh, different parts of the 16th note. So you've got four 16th notes. So accent the downbeat. That's not hard because it's the thumb. So make sure it's the loudest note of the four. Ah, but this is where it gets harder. Now accent the, the second 16th note, which is your first finger, the first time you pluck the first finger. I'm exaggerating here, but... I don't know if you can hear that. And then try to do the, the ring, uh, the middle finger accent. And the reason you do that is because when you're playing uh, a piece, whether it be a, a classical piece or, or finger style piece, or if you're writing a song, you, you know, like that. You want certain notes to pop out. You want to draw the attention to certain notes. And so um, when you accent, when you can accent any finger at any moment, uh, that's a great skill to have. So that would be if you if you need to take it, if you need to take these lessons, these finger style lessons or finger picking patterns lessons to another level, that's where you can, you know, if, if, I, if this is if I'm going too slow for you. But learning a new pattern every day is not too slow. Like I said. Normally, I would teach one or two new patterns a week to a student. So don't be discouraged if you don't have today's pattern down tomorrow, okay? Eventually, we'll move on to something else, and uh, uh, you won't have to uh, – you, you can look back on this and work on stuff. My hair is kind of all over the place. Um, so anyway, okay. So I'm going to log off. I see we're down to 29 people, so I'm losing you. Um, and I appreciate everybody. Kathy, you're here from wall to wall every day. Diane, you're here too. Uh, you got my little story there, the beaver story. Uh, there's a few of those. Uh, and uh, of course, I would never say anything bad about them, but I don't really have anything bad to say about them. So I don't have anything bad about to say about most people. So, okay, I will check my messages on Discord. Um, and then, yes, East End, that's exactly right. You can do that one. Um, uh, uh, oh, right hand. Yeah, if your right hand cramps up, that's true. Um, uh, I, I, I kind of will kind of do little stretches, things like that. Um, at some point, I want to uh, do a video maybe on the stretches that I do, but I also don't want anybody to hurt themselves. Um, I really do just, I, I'm very ginger. Like when I'm doing this, I'm not forcing anything. I'm just kind of, kind of just get my finger. And I don't crack my knuckles. I just heard my knuckle crack, but I don't do that. Um, I, you know, I, and one thing too, when I go for walks, when you walk, your blood goes down to your hands and they get really, sw they swell up. So one thing you can do is you can raise your hands up and it actually kind of gets the blood out really quick out of your hands. And that really helps too. Um, you can also just kind of rub your hands uh, in here is a really good, you know, like if you get your, get your thumb in there, Sometimes when you're, you get cramps, it's these muscles here. I especially will get cramps here if I'm doing flamenco stuff. 
it's like this muscle right here will cramp up and same muscle on this hand if i'm playing chords and i'm squeezing too tight uh that's another thing you can always lower the action of your guitar you can always go with lighter strings oh by lowering the action that means just lowering the string height on an electric guitar that's fairly easy because you can do it by adjusting these these screws here on acoustic guitar you actually literally will have to take the strings off take out the saddle here and then file it. Um, of course, I've done that and where I filed it too much and then that's a problem. But um, yeah, we can talk more about that in the future too. I, I, I've told you that I want to, I've got uh, Kelly, the girl that I write songs with sometimes, um, her dad is a retired rheumatologist. So I want to do an interview with him. And uh, so yes, the top of your left hand. Yeah, up here. Yep. And like I said, with flamenco, Classical guitar, what we're doing with the finger picking patterns is all like grabbing like this. It's like interior muscles. Flamenco is like shoving out like this. It's like this, these rasqueados, which is those things. Hey, I changed guitars. We can all take a drink. Ah, I'm not warmed up. But yeah, I can feel it immediately. I feel it on the top of my hand. And it's because I'm not relaxing. Yeah. So yeah, flamenco music is so much like these muscles. And I'm worn out. <laughs> I'm out of, I'm out of breath. Um, you know, I spent my whole, you know, the last 50 years playing classical music, but then I've only been doing flamenco like for the last five or six years. So I'm trying to, I'm kind of basically being self-taught. Uh, the true way to learn flamenco is to actually study with somebody. Like I need to move to Spain for about a month and just spend every day with a, a master. Um, and that's, I would love to do that. I mean, that would be my dream, would to literally take a month off and just move to Spain, Andalucia, uh, Granada. Somewhere like somewhere Granada, uh, somewhere like that, and uh, and just just you know eat eat eat, eat Mexican food and no, just kidding, <laughs> eat Mexican food, you know, because it's Spanish, right? Uh, and uh, no, but just eat the, the food. We had, Beth and I went to Barcelona. It was really one of our favorite cities in Europe, which is amazing because that's actually I think now the third most traveled to city in Europe behind London and Paris. Paris is almost always number one and London's always number two, or they go back and forth. And Barcelona just hit with a bullet. And we just, I mean, I feel like we kind of got there. It's always been top five. It's been top five for a while, but yeah, we really love Barcelona. Rome is always up there too. Rome is maybe number three. Um, anyway. Okay, Bruce. Oh, good to see you. I haven't seen you up there, but you know, there you are. I see now, now I see you. Um, yeah, and and then and then thank you, David, for pointing out that other the the other option for G seven, the G seven over V. That's an easier one. You could totally do that one. Uh, but if you can get the one with the pinky and the D the D note on the uh, B string, that's a good one. So the two options are the easy one is this, okay, and then the harder one is this and that. Um, oops, two zero zero three one. Uh, that second one is harder, but it actually, I like that voicing better. The the first one, you can see that two and the open next to the one, or those are both B notes. So you get end up with a parallel movement going from Bs to Cs, uh, and it's better not to have that. So anyway, all right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you all. Uh, again, I do this for me, not for you, because <laughs> I'd be going crazy if I couldn't talk to somebody. So I'm really glad you're doing, uh, you're you're sticking with me through this, and hopefully you're learning a lot. And um, and then we we'll have a graduating class when this is all over with. Okay, we'll have a we'll have a <laughs> then we can have a reunion in ten years <laughs> in Granada. Yes, is that where you live, Leo? Yeah, no, the, the whole region is like all the different styles of flamenco music are all named for the different um, cities in that region. So you, I could literally bounce around from region to region. You'd hear different types of flamenco music. It's amazing. Uh, so I, I would love to do that. I, I should just make a plan and do it. Maybe for my 60th birthday next year, huh? Anyway, God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon and I'll see you in, on the Discord in a little bit. Okay. Bye-bye.